close up with admire. Where we'll be unmasking issues closely to know more about God. Knowing more about business. Knowing more about talents. Knowing more about societies around and beyond. Asking uncommon questions. Sharing tips. Sharing joy. Sharing information. Admire Manyange, a public speaker, musician, and entrepreneur. Subscribe to AD Media SA YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back guys yet to another episode program Close Up and today we're going to be talking about marriage. Yes, we're going to be talking about marriage. What is happening? What is happening in marriages? Um, today we have such an amazing, amazing guest, guys. Quite an honorable man. Some of you know him already. He has a lot of platforms that you already know. YouTube, Facebook. He is none other than Pastor Chirume. Pastor, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me and a very uh, good evening to the viewers out there. Wonderful. Um, it's good to have you. Uh, you know, I I was just going through your pages. Uh, the one in particular, Masasi Evan Ziva you can check that page guys it's right on your screens you can like it uh, quite awesome content you find there you were talking about a number of things a couple of weeks ago and one particular video that you shared that got me interested was the video about marriages and mm. it got me thinking pastor that what is happening in this generation in regards to marriage uh, has marriage lost its essence? You know, has it lost? What is happening? Are people taking it lightly? What is really happening in marriages? Okay, uh, what a quite interesting uh, first question. <laughs> you know, the, the hmm. push is coming from the fact that marriage is not working. You know, marriage seems not mm -hmm. to be working these mm -hmm. days. Long back, we used to have our fathers, our mothers getting to 65, 75, 85 years together. But these days, uh, you see that two, three years into a marriage, people are already seeking counseling. People are already seeking divorce. Uh, so there seem to be a lot of things that are happening in today's age or today's marriages that were not happening way back, I don't know. Or it is a change in the perception or the way we, we view or see marriage in today. Which, which can be attributed yeah, it's a, to... Yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a change. Yeah? It's a change. I mean, like you're saying, it's a change. Uh, the way they're perceiving it, it's... If you ask almost everybody... Actually, I had an opportunity to speak to some lady and she was saying, mm. I don't believe in marriage at all. <laughs> I've seen a lot of things and mm. they've really destroyed me. I think marriage is, is just something people are just doing, but it doesn't work. People there lie to each other. I mean... What is the, is marriage now seen as a deception or how can, what, you know, what we, is really need, happening? I, I think we need to take it back uh, to, to, to where marriage was bad or conceived, you know. Uh, let's talk about Genesis 2, 24, mm. when God says the two shall become one flesh. That is the essence of marriage. It's about two human beings. And by human beings, I'm trying to say people are uh, human, people who are trying to become human, people who have got their faults, people who are still learning to know themselves. And we are having those two people coming together, trying also now to understand each other as one being. That's where the problem is. Because marriage, we, we, we have uh, an ideal marriage in our mindset. We have what we think. Uh, a marriage setup looks like or should be but now when we get into marriage we see that it's, 
totally a, a different ball game. That's where now the problems begin because you had pictured a kind of marriage in your mindset which is so ideal. A, a loving husband, a respectful wife. But now getting into marriage, you find it totally different. You have a, 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 uh, someone who's coming from a background where she was raised 27 years in a certain environment and you were raised 30 years in a certain environment. You're coming together trying to be one entity, one unity. That's where the problem is. First year, second year in marriage, you see that you are not compatible. Then divorce follows. I don't know if I might, if I might answer you. <laughs> yeah, I get you. I get you. I get you. The way mm. people are raised, it's different. Mm. And yeah. I think that's one of the biggest factors. And, and, and a person comes into the home and they have a formula that mm. they think works. And mm. they probably try to just sort of impose that format to say this how this is how things must work is 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 it that's what's happening or maybe there is something that we are missing that we don't know perhaps some people say when i was talking to the lady i told you about mm, she yeah. was actually saying it's it's because of men men are the ones that are causing divorces because they're cheating <laughs> i don't know what is your and, and if, what you, is if you ask your men they will tell you that it's the women who are causing divorce because Men who come from the point of uh, view that, you know, way back, they, we didn't talk about equal rights. We, know, we knew that men mm -hmm. would go to work. Women would be at home. Mm -mm. They were like, more like child-bearing machines. They would be at home, so submissive to their husbands. And with time, we now have equal rights. Uh, women also go to work. They even earn more than their husbands. Then that equality kind of, you know, situation is being brought into the marriage setup. So... Those mm -hmm. are some of the things. That's why I say you this, ask the woman. If you ask it, a man, you tell you that the women of today, you know, they are not respectful, they are not submissive, this and that. So it's it's a two way thing, mm. uh, and we don't have to 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 look it from one uh, point of view. We need if you want, we really need to to find a solution to a working marriage. We need to look it, uh, at it from uh, both sides. What is it that should be done? What is it that should not be done by men and also by women? Interesting. You yeah. mentioned something about the equality. Mm. And, and I also think that's one good big area there. And in today's world, mm. you know, there's a push for equality from different areas. And I don't know, what is your view on that? Do you think equality is good? Because, I mean, we're looking at the old marriages. They used to last long compared to the newer uh, marriages of today's age. Do you think these things like the development of equality, mm. women having to also bring the same maybe income or even more, or ladies getting qualifications, is that a threat to modern uh, marriages? Is that one of the reasons that causes that? Uh, like I said before, I was talking about the dynamics of marriage coming into the 21st century. Uh, just about an hour ago, I was listening to the news uh, on television. Here in South Africa, they are saying uh, these, you know, they want to, to put a bill into law which says women can also have more than one husband. You see oh, yeah. the shift. Oh, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. that. That's the element of equality. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about the element of equality. Men can have five wives. Why not women also have five husbands? So it's a bill that is actually under debate that if it passes, it will become into law. So you see that the equality started with it being uh, emancipation of women you know uh in jobs they have to receive the same pay they have to receive the uh, same uh, favors the same opportunities that men are receiving but now when it is now coming to marriage there is the need for equality <laughs> as they say men can have uh, i know is it polyg polygam i don't know if it's done by women it's still polygam polygamy like, yes yes <laughs> they are ah. now having more than one husband so we are moving or shifting away from what God really instituted is a marriage, whereby it's a husband, one husband, one wife who are coming together to be one thing. You know, not one husband, mm -hmm. two wives, two one one wife, two husbands. So that thing about equality, there has to be some limits, especially when it comes to to to, to a marriage set up. Uh, I, I, I don't know if, if I'm getting to the point here. I'm I get trying. you. I get you. I get you. I understand. Uh, you know, it's 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 um it's interesting, Pastor. I mean, mm. it, you, you the equality talking about these 
there's, there's other factors also that are attached to that same equality, mm. not really in the context of um, uh, polygamy per se. I was going to get to that. Mm. Uh, but since you mentioned it, I think maybe we can just talk about it. Mm. Uh, I read that article as well that was um, uh, 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 said uh, earlier on, I think it was last week, when mm. they said they're trying to get that law into, into the, uh, they're trying to pass that law where the women can get yeah. uh, also... Uh, can be polygamy. You know, it's, uh, what do you think the society will be 10 years from now? If, let's give, uh, for example, that that law is passed and women are now legally allowed to marry more than one husband, what do you think the society is going to be like in future? I think we already have en enough chaos. There is enough confusion and we shouldn't even add more confusion to this marriage setup. You know, we, 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 we already have a situation whereby men are marrying men, women are marrying women, which is a, a very debatable issue. So that's already a confusion that is taking place. And now putting on another law to say men, a, a, a woman can have five, six husbands, that's bringing more confusion. At the end of the day, we are going to end up with a very confused country, confused society where we do, uh, what, guess what, what's next? At the end of the day, it's, uh, I'll be able to marry my sister. I'll be able to marry my, my nini. I'll be able to marry my, my own relative. That's where we are heading if we don't live according to principles of what we believe. Like, personally, I'm a Christian. There are certain Christian values and principles that I need to stick to so that, uh, you know, we have an orderly society because our God is a God of order. So now... Uh, we have enough chaos, we have enough confusion that we need to deal with. So I don't even also believe that this... Don't you think... Uh, I don't believe that uh, this Don't you come think that yeah. also the confusion and this chaos mm. is also being caused by influence, particularly from friends? Uh, I don't know. D because they, they are, I've seen and heard so many instances of marriage that have broken down because of influence and friends from certain characters that might not really have the best interests of their friend that they're advising. Mm. And, 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 and what, do, what is your view on friends and friendship to people that are married? Uh, I, I would say we talk about peer pressure. We talk about outsiders. In the afternoon, uh, I was actually talking about this same issue, that people are there to give you advice, not to decide for you. Right now, as I'm seated here, I have the potential to do every sin that anyone can do. I have the potential to marry another second wife, third wife. I've got the energy, the potential to do that. And uh, it's having one wife, one wife is because it's a decision that I'm making based on my personal values and the principles. So I believe that as much as there is uh, peer pressure, as, there is, as much as there are people who pushes you to do something, at the end of the day, the decision lies with you. It's either you decide to do it or you decide not to do it. So uh, when you talk about cheating, we talk about uh, divorce, there are always external factors. But at the end of the day, it's what you do, what you decide that matters most. So peer pressure will always be there. Fake friends are bad mm -hmm. advisors will always be there. But what are your principles? And the values as individuals those are what matters if you want them your, your marriage you know <laughs> to 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 work out mm, thank you yeah. so much um ladies and gentlemen don't go anywhere pastor chirume is still with us he's going to continue to talk more about marriages and what is happening in today's marriages uh so we'll be back shortly after this <laughs> Close Up Talk Show is proudly brought to you by AD Media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We still have Pastor Chirume. Pastor, it's still good to have you on Close Up Talk Show. Ah, thank you. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Before we went on a break, you, talk, you were talking about friends, peer pressure. We're talking about the chaos that 
is, 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 is to come if give or take uh, that law to give women the right to have more husbands is passed on in South Africa. Um, and, 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 and just, just while we're still kind of partly on that, I wanted to talk about something that also works hand in hand with that. We're talking about friends mm. and, and, um, I don't know. So many people, they they say, I know I've been told that when I was getting married, that mm. when you're getting into marriage, there's certain things you're not supposed to say, you know, in regards to your past, you know, whatever is in the past is in the past, don't say it. And so many marriages have people who have kept certain secrets in the archives and they never spoke about it and they kept there. And some which may be turned into explosions in the future, explosions which grew out of proportion and ended up, you know, destroying the marriage. So what is your view in regards to certain secrets, things that happened long back? Do you think it's one aspect that's causing a lot of breakups in marriages? And what is your view on that? Uh, this is a, a very, a very tricky. Uh, this is very tricky because... Now that's where the answer, it depends, comes into play. It depends with what kind of secrets. And when we say secrets, are they things that are hidden? Or, you know, because secrets can be something that my wife might not know what happened. Uh, and I might not tell her because I don't think it would affect her in any way or, it, or is in, of any importance in our marriage now. And there are certain things that I definitely know that these things, if they are known, they will destroy my marriage. Then I keep them as secrets. But so let's talk about the child. Let's say you have a child in your past or even when you are still dating, from the very first day you meet the guy, he has to know that you have a child. Some people will hide the fact that they've got a child up until six months in a relationship. And then they want to, to tell the guy that I've got a child. Then the guy will say, no, I didn't know about that. Uh, my vision is that I don't want to get married to someone who's got a child. You know, So there are certain things that you need to speak out to your partner during the time of courtship when you've just met. Because marriage, you know, there are a lot of things that should be dealt with before you enter into marriage. You know. Then we, let's talk about another example is whereby we talk about, let's say for my family, almost everyone had a second wife, third wife, even my own father had a second wife, you know. Then I might tell my wife that my father is a second wife. That's okay. But now when we try to spiritualize the <laughs> what has been happening in the family, when I tell my, <laughs> my wife and say, there's a spirit of polygamy, there's a spirit <clears throat> that causes us to have more than one wife. Even if something mm. happens, your wife will view a, you as someone who has got a spirit uh, of potentially having a second wife, you know. So how we, we speak okay. about the things of the past, the things that are in our family, the way we speak about them before and during the marriage also matters, you know. So is there a formula to know when to say it and how to say it? I mean, how do you know that, okay, okay, give or take, there's a lady, she's got two kids, mm. all right? Mm. Maybe it's a mistake that happened when she was in high school, probably she was raped, or maybe she did it out of, I don't know, mm. uh, juvenile delinquency. She was young, she was, you know, vulnerable, and now she's in a relationship, she's serious with her life, she's transformed, she's received Christ, she's a Christian, or she's a good person, or whatever, and she's trying to build this relationship relationship with a guy how do or how do people know then when to tell and how to tell is there some sort of a formula or format how how does one do that uh okay i want to say this maybe for the first time uh i i, I do say it look i married someone with a child from the past i might not dwell or uh, divulge into circumstances you know but the first thing when we met i already knew she had a child you know, when she was still young, she already had a child. I knew when I approached Jay. So it's something that was open from the onset of our relationship, you know. Then there are certain circumstances whereby it's a long distance. Like these days, people meet on social media. You find this beautiful lady. You don't know much about the child because some don't post their children on social media. Then you actually 
get you in love with the person you communicate you start building a future from the moment you get into that bus you have to mention your destination you have to let the other partner know where you are mm-hmm. going and all the luggage that you are having in that bus rather than when you are halfway the journey you begin to say i've got another bag there i've got another this then that's where the confusion begins you know i've been dealing with another couple so you're saying right yeah. on the onset so mm. so right right on the onset you're saying a person must give they must just say everything about them so that there's no problems in the future so basically we're looking at what like one week into the uh relationship or whilst the guy is still trying to propose or uh, i'm more interested in the how okay. the how you, you part, know the you know? the the, the, the what, what what the most mistake that people do is they want to know the person when they are already in relation in a relationship with the person you commit first they don't want to know the person when you have committed uh, stronger marriages are built on friendships be a friend of the person that you want to marry know the person before you commit you know i love you is a very very powerful word that should not be quickly said when you don't know the person that you're telling that you love so before you know the person be friends with the person know the person talk to the person you know then when the, the moment you say i love you 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 know what you are saying i love you too you know the burden that you're bringing into your life <laughs> you know you know the kind of person that you're bringing into your life that's the mistake that a lot of people do that's why you will find these days with guys in church two weeks is dating this girl after two weeks they are is uh, with another uh, three weeks it's because you want to know the person when you are already in the relationship with the person you can't know a person when wow. you're already married to the person hmm. you can't know the person when you are already married to the person hey pastor that is strong uh, ladies and gentlemen stay with us we're coming shortly after this break and pastor chirumi is going to tell us in the last episode about marriage we're talking about marriage so don't go anywhere sit back relax we'll be back shortly after this break. close up talk show is proudly brought to you by ad media in association with the following companies appearing on your screen Welcome back ladies and gentlemen we still have Pastor Chirume in the house pastor we're still happy to have you here in the studio right now Ah oh, it's my pleasure thank you one wonderful uh before we went on a break pastor you're just talking about how people these days um these modern marriages how people don't know how to approach love because they get to commit first before they know the person they're not ready to get into knowing the person first and then committing and saying i love you mm-hmm. so perhaps you may help us or help the viewers know what what is the sort of the correct procedure of getting married right from the courtship the relationship to getting married what what is the remedy there okay basically everyone in his mind in his or her mind he has got an ideal kind of marriage set up or kind of relationship set up set up that he or she dreams of you know but the reality will always manifest itself before getting into a relationship there are a lot of factors way back they used to say rora na matongo you marry someone within the community someone you know someone your elders know someone is grou- been groomed you know visible where people could see that this is a well mannered child then you get married the nowadays of social media you meet someone on facebook you have a date in jo- johannesburg the next thing you meet in deben you are already engaged then you get into marriage relationship uh the best foundation for any marriage is communication proper communication make your thoughts make your vision make your intentions well known to the other partner that you want to uh, live your life with communicate th- your feelings your thoughts with your partner uh, or someone that you feel you need to 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 live with then find someone you are compatible with when i'm talking about compatibility you might wear a size 9 shoe like myself 
Sometimes if I get a size 7, it will be too tight for my feet. But probably size 10 will do because I can put a small cloth or a tissue inside the shoe so that my feet can fit in, you know. So compatibility has to do with mm -hmm. are you able to walk inside those shoes? We talk about passion. You can, they can be that intense feeling mm -hmm. for a person, mm -hmm. you know. You feel you need the person, you need the person. But the, you, you also need to develop that your, your, your love or your intentions become compassionate. Where you also... <laughs> Why am I preaching? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of focused, I like but it. I think we I, need to talk about I, this. <laughs> talk about I, this. I love. I love. I'm. I'm. I'm digesting. <laughs> I. I. I love the the analogy. You just spoke something that really struck a nerve inside of me. You mentioned about compatibility. Mm, I'm mm. thinking to myself because mm. I've heard that before. People talk about compatibility, yeah. but they've never explained it in the way you said that there's a person. Obviously, you will never get the person you dreamt of, you That's wrote true. on your That's book true. or in your That's journal. Mm. But you're going to look at a person and say, okay, this is the person I want, mm. uh, but can I adjust? Yeah. Like what you're saying, okay, a size 7 will be too small for me, mm -hmm. but mm. at least a size 10, I can put a cloth. Yeah. I can still walk, mm. you know? So so I think I think that's, that's very key. And maybe coming down to the practical part, mm. you know, because it's a clear in, uh, illustration, but like practically... Are there any goals that you can say maybe, uh, all right, uh, this, it's fine. You can live without this, you can. Yeah. Or how, how does one get to say, I can compromise here? Okay, this I can take. Do you have any advice on that? All right. Hey, uh, John, or is it Mark 3, 5 or 5, uh, which talks about Peter mm -hmm. having slept the whole night trying to catch mm -hmm. something and Jesus arrived on the pool and saw that these guys had caught nothing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It would be a lie to say this guy caught nothing. S excuse me, sorry, theologians. Okay. The whole night, <laughs> since Jesus found them washing their nets, it means they caught something, but something that they did not desire, something that wasn't on their mind when they left their homes, which means there were worms there, there were frogs, there were crabs, but these guys intended to catch fish. And they knew the type of fish they wanted. Know what you want as an individual. Know what you want. In the room, give the, that room for compatibility. I tell you, it would be very difficult to change a person's character when you get married to them. So, as a girl, as a, before you get married, say, I want a God-fearing woman, uh, husband, who does not drink. When you find someone who drinks and he tells you that he loves you, say, this is not what I want. Because uh, you can't transform that mm -hmm. person to say, now we are married because I wanted uh, someone who doesn't drink, now you need to leave this. So in terms of the compatibility aspect, that, that flexibility to change, you need to have eyes that I can actually see. That Will this thing change? Mm. Will, will this man change this character? You know, and uh, one of the mm. things is that when you set your goals, God will always reveal mm. certain characters before you even get married. But we are so deep in that love true, that yeah. at times we tell ourselves that I'll fight me for, for my marriage. You find a, a, an inbox message of your boyfriend cheating with another girl whilst you are still dating or you are still in courtship. Then you say, I'm fighting for my relationship. There are certain <laughs> signs and symptoms that God reveals to you before you get into your marriage. So you should be very observant, very prayerful before you get into your marriage. Because these revelations in almost every person's life, they are revealed before the marriage. But we have that thing that says, I'll so, fight for my relationship. Then you get into a relationship. So, so, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So maybe just, 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 thank you so much for that. But th maybe it's just in conclusion, Pastor. What do you think are the red flags? From what I picked up from you, I think you were saying there are certain things that you'll be looking at. Mm. And uh, because somebody's already head over heels, they're in love. They'll be like, I'm going to change him when I get married. And to that will happen. <laughs> uh, uh, what, 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 uh, what are the things, maybe if we can state them, not explaining, but just state things that you think, um, if you see these things, mm. that marriage is probably, or oh, there's a high probability that it won't work. What could be those things in conclusion before we close today? 
uh, attitude, character, uh -huh. mm -hmm. and is the uh, uh, women should not love men. The Bible says they should be submissive. So the element of submission, mm -hmm. which does not also entail that the guy is to be dominant in the relationship, and also the fact that is the man able to love, and the love comes with a lot of things. Because love is an action word, it's a doing word. So are you, you check if mm -hmm. the person loves you. If you are a girl, check if the person loves you. This person wants to be one with you. And if he wants to be one with you, does he, mm -hmm. he show the love now? Does he act the love and not just speak it? So you see the character of the wow. person, the attitude, the love. You can actually tell this person loves me. You can actually see that this person loves me. And in terms of the guys looking at women, see, uh, check the weaknesses of that person and see if you are cool with weakness. Let me use the word cool. If you are okay with her weaknesses, mm -hmm. <laughs> you might not talk about strength. Let's talk about the weaknesses. Yeah, yeah. Because usually marriages, di divorces mm -hmm. happen because of weaknesses. So are you able to live with her weaknesses? Are you able to live with his mm -hmm. weaknesses take time to know each other before you commit let's not just use the word i love you mm -hmm. as an excuse for wow. sleeping with someone that is that is that is profound i think i'm not done with you pastor we, we're gonna have another episode viewers we're really gonna talk more with pastor Chirume. this man is full of <laughs> wisdom there is actually a very interesting topic you mentioned this thing about uh uh sex confusing sex and love and using sex as an expression of love. It's a topic of another day that we really want to talk about. But anyway, thank you so much, Pastor Chirume, for being with us today. We really appreciate it as Close Up team uh, for coming over and speaking to us. It's been a pleasure. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for tuning in today. It's been a wonderful pleasure. Please don't forget to like as they share it. And please visit Pastor Chirume's page. It's Masasi. It's right there on your screen right now. Visit, like and share and continue to do good. Till we meet again. Yeah.